My name is Rachel Adams. I am the Chief Curator and Director of Programs at the Bemis Center. And I am here in Studio 10 with one of our residents, Shane Darwent. Welcome, Shane. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, it's, it's an honor to be here. I've thought about um, coming to Bemis for a long time, so it's, it's really cool to get to be here, um, especially during this really wild time when artists need a lot of support, um, so it's really special. And it's election day, so yes. it's like we're all a little bit kind of preoccupied and anxious, and so we're speaking to the future of uh, America by the time you see this. Yes, by the time you see it, we will hopefully know who is our, well, anyway, we don't yeah. even know yet. Yeah. So we're going to dive into talking about art and forget about all of that right now, which I think is really helpful. Um, so yeah, Shane, do you want to just talk a little bit about uh, your practice uh, before we kind of dive into some of the work that you've been doing sure. here? Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm a, a sculptor and photographer, but my background is in photography. Um, I've been photographing the built landscape um, for like the past 20 years. Um, I grew up in a sort of a, a suburban town outside of Charleston, South Carolina, and was really interested from a young age and sort of like watching the landscape kind of like grow and evolve and change. Uh, my father worked in the construction industry, so I was always like really closely connected to it. Um, and a camera has sort of always been the sort of the way that I, it's just been a sort of a tool of exploration um, for, for my surroundings and getting to know a place um, and getting to commune with it. Um, and oftentimes it happens um, in and around the spaces that that I find frustrating um, in some capacity. So it's it's really this kind of effort to better understand things that, that at first um, kind of aggravate me and try to make peace with places that I find problematic. So like the old market versus the new construction across the street. I actually <laughs> kind of like those apartments. I will I will throw myself under the bus. I, I kind of I kind of like them. Maybe it's just because I get to like look in and yeah. see what they're watching on TV. They're kind of funky. Uh, they, yeah. they all have roof decks, which I feel like. Well, is a the, nice the thing. roof decks and then the uh, all the shaped yeah. pieces on top. I do yes. feel like maybe that's a good segue into talking about these collage pieces that you did. So. At the beginning of this session, we had all of our residents quarantined for five days before getting tested for COVID. So they were all in their studios um, and, you know, we sort of tried to prepare them for that. Um, and I think Shane actually really did come prepared and thinking about what he wanted to do during those five days. So we're going to show you some of the work that he made and we can talk about that because I do feel like there is a relationship with our, the townhouses that are across the street from Bemis. And yeah. what you did, especially since your studio is literally facing those. So. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so let's maybe we can just yeah. start there on the wall. Yeah, so I, um, you know, coming to Bemis, I had sort of prepared, um, I had some large scale projects that I wanted to work on. That's what I was really excited about when I applied to Bemis. Um, I think I had sort of proposed applying to make sculptures for, for film, so like large scale ephemeral sculptures that would sort of disappear at the end. Um, but, you know, COVID happened and kind of our world got flipped upside down and so did sort of what I thought I was going to work on. Um, so I knew what I was going to work on when we came out of quarantine, but it was a fun challenge to think about something that I can do in the studio for seven days and not need access to any tools or machinery um, and really just kind of like go back to the basics. Um, you know, I have a background in photography and then before that it was like collage and just like playing around with scraps of paper. and. Um, so I really just, I printed out a bunch of recent photographs that I had been taking in Tulsa of these kind of um, quiet um, strip mall environments. Um, I was photographing these spaces during COVID, so the parking lots were largely empty. Um, places were sort of like pasting up, sort of like, you know, sort of the new carry out options that they were offering. So there were these kind of spaces that are already in transition, but sort of in COVID, they were really becoming these kind of these kind of desert landscapes where you're walking across these kind of vast parking lots and kind of seeing these kind of buildings shimmer as mirages almost. Um, and so it was really fun to kind of um, deconstruct them with just scissors and an exacto blade and kind of rearrange them and think about the future of, of spaces like this. Um, that were, that were kind of already hurting sort of before COVID and, and now with the rise of uh, online shopping, 
um, sort of firmly um, at the center of, of how we navigate the world, um, just, just really sort of curious about their future. Um, yeah, it really sort of makes you think about um, not necessarily unused space, but just like what are we going to do with all of this space, especially in the Midwest? You know, totally. I think Tulsa probably has a similar landscape to Omaha and just sort of seeing so many of these, you know, kind of, yeah, parking lots and like strip malls and, you know, some of them are getting redeveloped, mm -hmm. some of them are just sitting there. Um, but, you know, I really love when I sort of like the landscaping that like some still have and they yeah. keep up on and others yeah. don't and the color palettes like I don't know there's something about all of these collages that really sort of speak to like being in transition and sort of being stuck mm. at the same time I feel you know like the way that you've put them together um, really sort of does that to me and you kind of like feel like you're in this loop right like yeah there's no way to get out of it <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah I, I like them sort of being almost like kaleidoscopic to mm -hmm. where you can sort of like keep turning the lens and it's just constantly taking new shapes but you're forever in that kind of that space of the of the lens right um, and you can't yeah, you can't quite understand sort of like which way the sky is and which way the ground is and, um, and it's always like I feel so interesting um, you know as we like talked about that new construction across the street and like thinking about this like old brick building that we're in that's mm -hmm. from like you know the 1880s and like we have these gigantic wooden beams that mm -hmm. were like full trees right and then you look at like something like these with this like fake brick and like weird you know like concrete stucco mm -hmm. like who knows what's going on in some yeah. of them you know and just like thinking about like the materiality of like the landscape and how much it has changed from like when there was just like cobblestone streets and yeah. like beautiful brick buildings and now we have like corrugated metal and you know who knows like yeah what's exactly gonna be, whatever you know? version of styrofoam is exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there's that like kind of like planned obsolescence uh, that happens in, in the sort of built environment and especially with sort of like sort of like shopping centers and strip mall spaces where they were only sort of meant to last 20 or 30 years. And so we're really seeing the kind of sunset of their lifespan. And, you know, one of the artists that I'm really interested in is Gordon Matta Clark, and he was like reconfiguring sort of dilapidated industrial spaces in New York in the 70s and so I kind of like see these almost as sort of like meta sketches for sort of like how you could reapproach mm -hmm. some of this um, this architecture that kind of has a parallel to those spaces and architecture is what he used to call uh -huh. it right yeah I love him too yeah. Um, yeah I think it's you know something that feels very just it feels very current like looking at these and thinking about especially like we're where we live, um, you know, maybe not so, not so necessarily the same in like in New York City or right. even in like downtown Chicago, right? Where you're just right. surrounded by something completely different. But right. when you're here out on the edge, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's things like this that happen that, yeah, just feel wonky. Yeah, um, totally. totally. But, and like, why is this even here? And, you know, <laughs> nobody's actually using it. So like, could we make it something useful? Right. Um, but yeah. But they're also such like they're such specific spaces that it's really hard to imagine beyond the sort of like the occasional mega church or right. or sort of um, new Mexican grocery store. There's like it's hard to imagine sort of how we kind of renegotiate these these behemoth mm -hmm. <laughs> buildings. Yeah, exactly. And you know, now it sort of feels like a lot of them are moving and you know getting leveled and getting right. to these like live work loft right. kind of things that are right. like trying to reimagine like what it used to be like in a city is yeah. like, you can have that now and it's like but it still feels so constructive right. um, and yeah. so backward to so me. Canned, right? yeah. yeah not organic at all right exactly um cool well i don't know if we want to maybe if there's any specific one that you want to talk about that like maybe um. is like sort of your yeah. favorite or you yeah. know one that really like sticks out or like yeah. we, you know I think especially we had talked about this one in our earlier studio visit mm -hmm. thinking about the sculpture that we're going to go that, that upstairs makes, is makes like a sense. good yeah, yeah. way to um, transition yeah. I think so yeah yeah so so this one um, was one of the early ones in the series and I was still trying to kind of um, think through the process you know I actually came with um, with some gouache um, 
that I was going to sort of be like painting shapes on top of the photographs, and I quickly learned that, that I couldn't get the the density and build up with gouache. If I had just done a couple of tests before coming to Bemis, I would have figured that out. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this was one where I was kind of like cutting it apart and sort of like collapsing the elements of the image together. And a lot of the um, the photographs that I take sort of have like very sort of like level horizon lines. So like like the you know the top of the building will be sort of like parallel to the edge of the frame or sort of very perpendicular. Um, and so with this image, that was the case. And so I was able to sort of cut sections out of it and sort of collapse it in on itself um, in this way that sort of, you know, at first glance, it still might read like, like the side of a building. But then when you sort of get a little bit closer, spend a little bit more time with it, you realize that the building's kind of been folded in on itself. Um, this image is actually of a KFC drive through um, and what you're looking at is like a red and white striped awning that's over the window where you would pick up your food. So there was actually um, a woman in her car down here that was like, I was like, don't worry, I'm not <laughs> taking your picture. I'm actually photographing this really beautiful uh, <laughs> specimen <laughs> above you. Um, but I had been, I've been sort of photographing and making sculptures um, sort of in response to storefront awnings and their architecture and their surfaces and just thinking about them as sort of a, a building process. Um, and s one of the things that I sort of like about them is that they kind of, they, they, they function almost as like dimensional paintings in the landscape, um, but they get to sort of play with like natural light in a certain way. So you have this, this like red and white striped plane that's like coming out at you, which allows this kind of shadow to kick back against the building but it itself becomes sort of like a, a receiver of shadows of the environment sort of around it. So there was already this kind of like trippy thing that was happening in the image. Um, so it was really fun just to sort of like see how subtle the sort of the gestures are that I could sort of do to an image that would bring somebody into it and sort of encourage them to sort of like look at the side of a stuccoed KFC building um, in a way that sort of maybe they hadn't before. Uh, it's funny because I feel like, especially when I look at this one, I like immediately think about like Daniel Buren and like mm -hmm. his work too, just because of the striped and like being out in public and totally. um, you know thinking about you know those like fabric pieces that he would make mm -hmm. also you know and sort of interventions because this does kind of like if you didn't know the context, it does sort of look like it could have been like you know just based on like the building. You're like okay, that's a building, but like. What is that exactly? You know, like it looks like somebody yeah. may have like pinned something up quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, there's sort mm -hmm. of this um, interventionist feel to it that I really yeah. love. So that's that's nice. I mean, I do like part of my sort of like uh, renegotiation of some of these suburban landscapes has been to sort of like try to kind of like find that beauty that, as like an angsty teenager, I always like dismissed. And so sometimes I'll see like classic like Smithson or, or Noguchi moments in like strip mall parking lots and so sometimes it's like it's like this kind of weird game of being like oh yeah there's the Daniel Buren or or there's the Noguchi sort of like over here that this car is sort of like leaking oil on or um, <laughs> so it's this way of it's like trying to sort of say hey these kind of <laughs> these moments of odd bliss do exist in this space right um and there's a there's a connection between sort of like the architecture of function and uh, you know modern sculpture or fine art or, or whatever and right so kind of collapsing those boundaries yeah right. and I think we talked a little bit about like Charlotte Posadensky who you know sort of really took over that like these pieces of like industry and like made them into art objects that mm -hmm. um, you know sort of references that a little bit so maybe when we go upstairs we can talk about that more yeah awesome okay. sounds good all right we. Okay, we are back. We have made a scene change. Um, and yeah, we're gonna talk about this sculpture that Shane has been working on since he got out of quarantine. Um, do you want to, we talked a little bit about the awnings. Um, yeah. And so this is what number that you've done now in terms of sort of scaling up these pieces and um, making these big pieces. So I made my first awning sculpture in 2016. Um, I met a shop, I was um, going to graduate school at the University of Michigan, and I was spending a lot of time on the roadways there, and um, sort of built a relationship with a shop outside of, outside of Detroit. Um, 
And so they let me kind of like shadow the process and learn from them. And so I welded the forms for that and then worked with my wife, who's a really good um, seamstress and, and sculptor herself, to sew new awning covers for it based on sort of like old awning covers that I was collecting. Um, so that was the first one and we worked on it ourselves. And then I'd say for like the past two and a half years, I've had a number of opportunities to show new awning sculptures and I've built a relationship with a shop in Tulsa um, and been bringing them models. Um, and they've been fabricating those forms based on the models that I brought in and based on kind of a series of conversations. So this is the first one that I'm kind of like coming back to and trying to apply their techniques that, that they sort of make awnings with um, and do it myself. So I would say this is probably like the, in that whole run, maybe the sixth or seventh sort of sculpture that's okay. kind of based on the form mm -hmm. of the storefront awning. Yeah. And this one is black in particular, but you've done different multicolored pieces before too. It's not just yeah. dark and sinister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually they're not so like uh, sex shoppy, sort <laughs> of like film noir kind of. Most of them have been really bright and poppy. Um, and uh, yeah, using sort of primary colors and kind of thinking about the kind of um, oftentimes um, DIY or kind of garish surface design that, um, that awnings will have. Um, but this, you know, I kind of was thinking through, I'm having my second solo show at the Spencer Brownstone Gallery in New York next year. Um, and earlier in, in COVID, I was thinking about what that show would look like. And I, I kind of, it was one of these um, funny but true moments where I, I sort of woke up um, and had this kind of vision of these kind of, um, these, a series of black storefront awning sculptures. Um, and it was, you know, of course, sort of like having these really intense dreams and sort of all of the businesses were kind of, you know, closing their doors. Um, a lot of people that I knew sort of were, were having to sort of permanently shutter um, the doors to their businesses. And so it was, um, you know, it seemed like, like too perfect of an opportunity not to bring, um, not to reconsider sort of storefront awnings as a, as a metaphor for um, what we were kind of going through. Do you want to talk a little bit about your process? So you brought some of, um your models up here, yeah. um, you know, how you got from here to here even. Totally, so, <coughs> okay. <coughs> um, so here, here's some of the, um, some of the models that, uh, one of the models that Rachel was referring to, um, this is the first one that I, that I made, and then <coughs> here's a, a second one. Um, and then here's all the parts <laughs> for this one. Um, <laughs> This, it was all assembled and then I was like, I actually don't even like the form. I'm just gonna cut it apart and scatter them across the parking lot or I don't know, do something. Um, but with these in particular, I kind of had these, um, you know, I had these kind of like visions in my head for, you know, these knotted, twisted, kind of tangled forms. So I started out this project by doing sort of a series of, of drawings um, first just in my sketchbook of these kind of like knotted forms and then I was using wire um, and pliers and bending the wire into these kind of twisted knotted forms um, and so sort of after I had these like really small little kind of like wire maquettes then I kind of thought through how those could translate into um, each component could translate into like a storefront on form that was true to how you might see an awning in the landscape. Um, and so then from those little wire maquettes, um, then I used foam and just like some black construction paper um, to make these models. Um, and I spent, you know, probably three weeks just um, kind of drawing, making wire models and then turning those into these before I kind of settled on um, a series of three sculptures for, for the show. Um, and you, you know, we talked about you coming to Bemis and being able to, you know, one thing that we love about Bemis is that you have all this amazing space, both up here on the fifth floor, but then also 
across the street in our um, sculpture and ceramics facility, Okada. Um, so really just sort of being able to create something on your own again as opposed mm -hmm. to using that shop um, and sort of getting back to, to that aspect of making. Um, how's that been? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's been, it's been challenging, but also really rewarding. I mean, um, like, like so many um, of us, you know, I was kind of like down to my sort of small apartment for a long time. I lost access to my studio. Um, so it was like whatever I could do at the kitchen table was really kind of like all that was happening. So it was a lot of drawings. It was a lot of model making. It was a lot of like teaching myself sort of 3D rendering programs. So the idea of, of getting to come to sort of Bemis was like really fantastic, like to think of like having my hands like on a material and sort of learning that way and saying, okay, I've worked it out in my head, but here's a space where I can actually kind of like get messy, I can make mistakes, I can sort of try something on a large scale, um, I, can, <laughs> I can make all the noise that I want and dust that I want um, within reason. <laughs> um, and it, so it was like, it was really kind of, um, it had been sort of like a long period of time as an artist, somebody who's used to making physical things of not being able to do that. Um, so it was really, really exciting to get to come here and do that. Of course, then I get here and I start to make them and I'm not a welder, I'm not a metal worker at all, especially welding aluminum, mm. which these forms are. And so it was, um, you know, it was a romantic idea to sort of say, oh, I get to be the sculptor again um, and not pass these off to a shop, but it was this, like quick um, <clears throat> and steep learning curve where I was like, oh, this is, this is actually really difficult. This is, there's like a, you know, like a really developed art and craft to producing these um, that even if, you know, you don't sort of associate that with a form like this, um, there truly is a very specific system right. of putting them together. So it was like, um, you know, both romantic, but also, um, you know, as it should be challenging. Yeah, definitely. Um, and how are you feeling now? You've, you've, you know, when we met last week, was that last week? I can't even remember. Um, yeah, you know, ago. you were almost sort of finished with this, mm -hmm. but you were also talking about, like you said, kind of like taking it apart and like <laughs> yeah. having it in maybe pieces. And we sort of talked about what that could look like. Like, um, and then that's sort of where I brought up, I think, Charlotte Posenensky because she had this sort of participatory, mm -hmm. um, part of her practice where people could purchase certain aspects of the piece and put it together in a way that they wanted to. And so, I don't know where, if you've thought about that anymore yeah. or, you know, where that sort of is. In your yeah, well, that's been one of the, I mean, the other, the other crazy thing that happened after I had um, sort of developed this project, um, you know, George Floyd's murder happened and sort of all across the country, we were sort of like reconsidering monuments and sort of who gets to build them and who they're for and, and what, what is, um, like, you know, who a monument speaks to. Um, and so sort of as somebody interested in large scale sculpture, um, I really kind of have had to sort of grapple with what that, what that means. And so one of my interests in this project is that this black fabric actually sort of is able to sort of like be manipulated and sort of um, with a solvent, you can kind of remove layers of it and it can sort of speak to this kind of constantly transforming landscape that we, that we live in. Um, so like I s still consider this like very much a, a work in progress. Like I had to sort of take it to this place to then figure out sort of like what it needed. Um, and that's why this time has been really nice because I've been able to kind of like sit with it. The show's not going to be until next year. So I really have seen this as kind of like, like a, a workshop retreat. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to sort of like produce something um, in its first draft, its sort of initial iteration, have conversations with other artists, um, and you know think through what associations people are having with it, um, how those differ with with my initial sort of interests in it, and um, really sort of be able to like have this be kind of a living living thing, and think through um, yeah think through sort of ultimately what I want it to become. Yeah. So it's here now, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I think that sort of there'll be a, a time this week where like I break all these individual um, pieces off um, and scatter them um, metaphorically across this space and sort of 
and consider an alternative iteration of the work and, and try to sort of point to the fact that, um, you know, like our economy, like our country, like our culture, um, sort of the world is just is constantly sort of shifting and taking new shapes and, and try to have a work that kind of can, can engage with that idea, yeah. can sort of look and feel um, solid and stayed and permanent, but really, you know, be able to be sort of like um, poked at with a finger um, or sort of have a, a single gust of wind come through and, and wipe it out completely. Yeah, and then it becomes something else. Yeah. Um, and that's what it needs to be at that moment, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think that's a good place to end. Awesome. How do you feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this has been great. I appreciate yeah. the conversation. Me too, me too. And I hope you all will check out more of our content, our programming online, beamacenter.org, um, or follow us on Instagram, follow Shane on Instagram, we'll put all that stuff in the comments, and um, yeah, we don't know what our future selves will feel, but <laughs> yeah. I hope it's um, positive. <laughs> yeah, same. Take care, everybody. Thanks for spending time with us. Yep, stay safe. Bye. See ya.